Hey, did you know that scarcity can block your wealth and boost your sales? It can. And on this episode, I am going to talk about what you need to know regarding scarcity and where to use it and where not to use it in your business. Hello, lovely dynamic women, and welcome to the Dynamic Women Podcast. I am Diane Rosen, your host, and I'm excited to talk about scarcity. You may be wondering why, but listen up and I'll tell you the deal. You're listening to the Dynamic Women Podcast. Each week, you'll be inspired by our global community of women. They'll share with you tools and stories to help you be dynamic in every area of life. He's your host, award-winning coach, and the CEO and founder of Dynamic Women, Diane Ralston. Hello, Diane Rolston here. I'm going to talk about how scarcity can block your wealth, but also it can boost your sales. So let's talk about that today. Um, thank you for being here on my Diane Rolston, my business page here. I am a coach, a speaker, a trainer, and I run a women's community called Dynamic Women. And so I just went live in my Facebook group called the Dynamic Women Community. I absolutely love that community because I go in there live quite often and I share things and we have fun, like we do fun little little um, uh, questions in there and we learn about each other. So I encourage you to join over there. Um, I'll share the link at the end. Um, but I wanted to talk today about how scarcity can block your wealth and scarcity can also boost your sales and so how is it the case that scarcity can block your wealth stop your wealth from coming and it can also increase your sales oh my goodness so let's talk about why I even started thinking about this so today I did the million dollar woman training uh, with a bunch of women, we talked about how to boost your inner and outer wealth. And the secret to doing that is um, it's actually less about sales and more about you. But anyway, we talked about scarcity. So we played this little game of what per was perceived by a whole bunch of negative things. And I asked, does it boost up your wealth or does it block your wealth? And what's funny was I was totally saying that it blocks your wealth. But as soon as I asked it and I saw some thumbs coming up, I was like, man, there, there is totally a different way of thinking about this. Um, and so I want to share with you today about the blocks and boosts that scarcity can bring you and why this matters to your business. So first, let me talk about how scarcity blocks your wealth. So it comes in the scarcity mindset. If you have the scarcity mindset that there is not enough to go around as a business owner, that there's not enough customers, not enough clients, what this ends up doing is it has you put in a place where you don't feel your full value because you're constantly doing uh, two things. One, you're constantly comparing yourselves to others because you don't feel like there's enough because there are other people out there. And so rather than focusing on yourself and staying in your lane, you start looking what other people are doing and what other people are saying and what other people are selling. And so it pulls you away. That scarcity mindset is pulling you away from you doing well and the things that you really know how to do well. The other thing that can happen is when you have a scarcity mindset and you don't feel like there are enough customers out there, what that can end up doing is you start to drop your value because you get desperate and you think, oh, I gotta, I gotta charge less for that. And I, and I, and I can't really charge as much because there's not enough people out there. And I just want people to buy. And so I'm gonna drop the pricing. It doesn't serve you. So having the scarcity mindset of there's not enough to go around, there's not enough customers to go around, there's not enough clients to go around, there's not enough money to go around changes your actions it changes how you value yourself it changes where you focus your attention you're going to focus your attention on others and what they're doing it is not a healthy place to be 
It also restricts, constricts how you're being. You're going to hold on to your money tighter. So if you have scarcity in your business, you're not going to want to invest in working with others to help move your business forward. You're not going to want to invest in getting help, support, delegating, getting an employee, getting people on contract, hiring companies to help to move your business forward. That scarcity mindset is going to have you hold on, hold on super tight to any little penny that you make. And it doesn't keep the world going around in the economy at all. And you're not going to think about investing. You're going to think that costs money. I'm spending money. I'm losing money. That mo money is going away. With an abundance mindset, you're going to be putting out to invest and have it come back. We also talked today about what can you do to plant the seed, to grow the tree, so you can harvest not just once many times, um, not, I mean, not just once in that you're going to harvest like 10 apples from that one apple seed, but you will harvest each and every season. So the scarcity mindset will block your wealth in that it's going to stop you from investing in yourself, from investing in your business. It's going to put your focus on other people. It's going to have you devalue yourself. And all of that is a really great way to block your business success. Now, why is scarcity also a good thing in your sales? You want scarcity in your sales, not in the amount of sales, but how you do your sales. Now, what does that mean? Maybe you've heard of the use of the word a limiter. You need a limiter. I'm sure you've seen the car industry, uh, you know, this is the the employee discount time, right? You know, there's a certain time, you know, it's like no money down for a certain amount of months or weeks or, or people even. Um, you've seen all of these type of limiters before. You've even seen companies, fast food companies do it where this is the new burger or this is the new sandwich or this is the new drink. And it's only for a certain amount of time. I know my husband really likes uh, the, the Easter um, Cadbury egg McFlurry at McDonald's. And so for him, it's, it's only a limited time. I know all the people that are like coveting the Starbucks pumpkin spice latte or whatever it is uh, that comes out in just certain period of time. I have a client who stockpiles eggnog when it comes out because it's a limited time. Scarcity in demand of a product in your sales pushes people to make a decision. The decision is, do I get this now or do I make the decision later? If people don't make a decision now, they probably won't make the decision later. It gets put off and put off and put off and put off. Scarcity can happen in the way of you must be on this live workshop. Otherwise, there's no recording. Imagine in me doing this right now, I said there you couldn't listen unless you listened live. More people would start showing up live. That's just like if you offer a lead magnet, something free, where someone gets on your website, they sign up, they get something, and then you shoot it over to them. If they have an unlimited amount of time to view it, to listen to it, to read it, there is a very high probability that they won't. There are many times when I've, I've received something like that, and then a couple of days later, I get an email that says, hey, you only have 48 more hours to watch that video. You can bet I make a decision at that moment if I'm going to watch it or not. So a limiter is putting a scarcity in either the timeline you can get something, the amount that you can get um, in a discount or the amount of people that can get it. And so limiter is amazing for making people make a decision in the buying process. So let me give you some examples of some limiters and you've seen them all around and you'll probably always be looking now at advertisements at sales and thinking about, wow, like what kind of limiter is here? That's a limiter. I see that. I see this. Uh, and so one limiter is on timeline. 
So this limiter, it's like, this offer is only good for the next two days or until this date or until five o'clock today or while you're in the building. So you've seen the limiter on time. You can also do a limiter on amount. This deal is only good for the first 100 people, right? Come to the open house and the first 100 people get a swag bag. Limited quantities, only two per store. So a limited on amount at a certain location. You've seen the like craziness that happens for new Apple products, the new iPhone, because there's only a limited stock of them. This even happened when I was younger with the Cabbage Patch Kids. If you guys remember the Cabbage Patch Kids, uh, Cabbage Patch Dolls, my mom like had to line up to get one of these. She had to go all over to try and find one one Christmas. Uh, she remembers that <laughs> very clearly. So when there is a demand in the economy, when there is a demand for a specific type of product, that creates its own scarcity, right? And it pushes you to run out and buy it. If there's a limited time or a limited quantity of it, you're pushed to make a decision to buy it and you're more motivated to run out and try and get it. This also happens when you're doing an offer from stage, right? You can offer a price discount for only so many people. You can also offer added value for only a certain amount of people. Like for this, uh, those who get it, um, first, like the first five people will get this added bonus. So we only have five of these, let's say these mugs. We only have five of the, the dynamic women. I am dynamic. Ain't nothing going to break my stride. The first five people get this, or we only have five of these. So only five people get it. You can also do a limiter on those who buy the lower end package or the lower end product you know, they don't get the bonus, but the bonus goes to those who buy the bigger package or the bigger plan. And so if we go back to cars again, I've seen some where like you get a roof rack and you get a bicycle. Um, there can also be specials on not just the bigger package, but the one pay. So if you, if you buy today, if you pay it all down today, that you get some other discount, maybe free delivery, or some um, financial discount that comes off of it. So scarcity is a great thing when it comes to sales when you are doing it. It pushes the customer, the client, or potential customer, potential client, to actually make a decision to buy in that day, in that time. Now, some people don't like scarcity. Some people don't like limiters being put on things. And that's okay. You know, everyone is allowed to have their own opinion. But I have been the recipient of limiters and it has pushed me to make a decision. When you give me an unlimited amount of time to make a decision, I often don't make a decision at all. Or you could think I do make a decision and decide not to buy. When you put a limiter, limited amount of time, a limited amount of quantity, I then get a sense of urgency and it pushes me to buy that thing if I really want to have that thing. Sometimes it's made me want something I didn't think I even wanted. And it's made me act. And I, for that, I've been grateful in many, many cases. Sometimes I've been pushed to make the wrong decision. And that's okay. And that's why if you're going to have a limiter and you're going to have scarcity and you're going to put people in that feeling that there's short supply of this and there's a shortage and I need to go and buy it, you can have... Uh, negative effects, like people start hoarding products. You've probably heard that recently in the news. But if your business wants to be in integrity with scarcity, you should have like a 30-day return policy. So that if people are in that place of, of feeling like you've pushed them psychologically to make a decision that wasn't in alignment with them, then you also have to be in integrity to honor, to allow people to as long as they haven't consumed the product, right, to come back and to return. That's just the right thing to do. So I encourage you that if you are thinking about your business to look at the pieces of where do you feel scarcity in your mindset? Do you feel scarcity in the amount of money you have in your business or your life? 
Do you feel scarcity in your mindset around how many customers, clients, or potential uh, leads that you have in your business? And ask yourself, is that hindering, is that blocking your wealth in your business? Is that blocking your revenue, blocking your profits? Because of that, are you holding on to money and you're not investing in things that really will push your business forward? If you could invest $1 and get $2 back, would that be worth it? Yeah, it would be. If you could invest $1 and get $10 back, would that be worth it? Yeah. So be flipping your mindset on scarcity to the abundance. It will open up possibilities to you. It will help you to move forward in, in life and in business. And when you're going to make an offer, don't feel uh, nervous about creating a limiter in your sales. It just helps people to make a decision. You have to trust that if people don't want your product or service, then that will help them to make a very conscious no and to walk away. But if they do want the product, if there is a piece of them that wants your product or service, the scarcity the limiter will help them to make a more immediate decision. It will help you to work together. And as long as you are working in integrity and you offer a great product or a great solution in your services, a great result, a great solution, a great benefit for their life, and you can really stand in that, then having a limiter means that they will get the solution, the result, the benefit they want and they need a lot faster. It will help you on your client you help the client and get them on the client journey a lot faster, which will then result in their happiness and their success. So really, it is a win-win. It makes people jump. It makes people move. It makes people make a decision. So scarcity in your sales is good. Scarcity in your mindset is bad. Make sure that you know the difference and that you are in a place where you're making a conscious decision to use it in the right way. So I said I would drop in the link to the Dynamic Women Global Club. If you are a woman looking for more cool trainings like this, more fun, more connection with other people, I encourage you to jump over and you're gonna be asked three questions. When you are asked these three questions, please answer them so that I can easily and quickly move you into the group and welcome you into the community. Now, this Facebook group is complimentary, is free. There is no payment to be in there. We have lots of fun. There's lots of free tips, trainings, uh, similar to what I'm doing right now because I just went live in there. I have a really cool training I just did on there on how to not be vanilla, how to be extraordinary so that you can have better business results. So you can go on over there to hear that video. I also encourage you to check out this opportunity that we have coming up to be in the next Dynamic Women book collaboration in the series. Our first book I'll show you was Success Secrets. 52 women, top thought leaders, experts, and dynamic women share their stories and secrets on success. Our next book is Confidence. So if you want to be one of the 52 women featured with me, where I share you with my network and you also make money off of selling your own books, build your notoriety, your expertise, get yourself out there and want a basic plug, like super simple for you, plug and play way to be a published author in 2020. I encourage you to register for Monday at noon Pacific time. I am doing a session, a free session, complimentary session on how to be in the book, and book strategies to be in a collaborative book. Because these are things that not everyone is teaching. So I want to make sure that you know how to benefit from being in a collaborative book for your business and for your life or career. So do that. Jump on over there. And make sure that moving forward, you know how to use scarcity right in your business so that you can make sure you're always boosting your wealth. Stay dynamic, and I'd love to see you in the Facebook group, and then on Monday in the Dynamic Women Confidence Book Session. I'll see you there. Have a great weekend. Bye. Thank you, Dynamic Women, for joining us today. Please hop on over to iTunes to subscribe and leave us a review. Who do you know who needs to hear our message? We'd love it if you'd share our channel with your friends and family. If you're ready to be more dynamic, have more balance and more success, 
head over to www.dynamicwomenclub.com forward slash free gift for your key to success book. Stay dynamic. Hey, I trust you got a lot out of this episode. And if you did, make sure you like it, that you comment and that you subscribe. And you know, if you haven't yet, please review this podcast. I would love it. What I'm going to start doing is giving a shout out to those who review the podcast so that I can give some love back to our listeners. And why do I also want to give some love? Because did you know by Podcast Magazine, we have been voted in the top 50. We are number 17 of top podcasts run by moms. Yep, I'm a mom, if you didn't know that. My kids are currently five and eight. I got a boy and a girl and it makes life busy. So we are super proud to be a top 50 podcast. Thank you so much, Podcast Magazine. And if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss out on any future episodes of the Dynamic Woman podcast. I absolutely love our listeners. And so if you have a success story from implementing something that you have heard on the show, either from me, from what I have shared, or from an interview that we have done, shoot me an email, diane at dianerolson.com. I want to start featuring our success stories on a future episode. And who knows, maybe your success story would mean that we feature you in a full episode. Wouldn't that be cool? So email me, dianadinerolston.com if you have a success story from listening and implementing something that we have taught. Do you feel that you also have a confident story that is worthy of getting published? I am looking for authors. Potentially it's you. If you have a story or secrets on how to be more confident in your life, in your business, then shoot me an email, dianadinerolson.com. Let me know why I should feature you in an up, our upcoming book, Dynamic Women Confidence Secrets. This is a wonderful opportunity of putting yourself in alignment with me and 51 other women so that you can promote yourself, but also leave a legacy by being a published author in 2020. If you're interested in that, Make sure you head on over to dianerolson.com, call for authors, and book a time to chat with me to share your story so that you can be a published author in 2020. Thank you so much for listening. And until next time, stay dynamic. Bye.